what's up everybody welcome back to pntv this is poetry's news and twisted views i am poetry i'm late 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 getting to work so and there's a detour on the dog on road so i don't know how long it's gonna take me to get there <clears throat> i tried to keep notes about what i was gonna talk about today but i wrote my notes so damn small i don't know if i'm able to read them while i'm driving so we're gonna try to get through this y'all um last week after i posted pntv news um we had another death another celebrity death gerald springer also known as jerry springer the king of trash tv is basically how people are identifying him jerry springer had one of the longest running trash tv shows out there and i'm telling you i was here for it every week i was one of the people that was sitting there and watching tv jerry 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 that was me that was me and i'm not ashamed i knew so many people who had went on that doggone show on other shows like his like jenny jones and ricky lake um sally jesse raphael didn't do a, too, a lot of trash she was kind of more Oprah-ish, but you know, she still had some of her trash moments on her too. Yeah, and Jerry Springer's show outlasted them all. So, you know, Jerry also went on to have um, Judge Jerry because he was not, he was illegally a lawyer. Um, I think he became a judge as well. He used to be the former mayor of Cincinnati or was it Cleveland? Cincinnati. Former mayor of Cincinnati. And yeah, so he, you know, took on the role of Judge Ju uh, is it Jerry Judge? Judge Jerry? Judge Jerry? The show lasted four years. It just went off the air in 2019. I didn't actually watch that show. Um, by the time that show came out, I was kind of getting over a lot of the trash TV. <clears throat> but I give, I say, I keep losing my voice every time I'm talking now. <clears throat> I say that it's, I have a lot of allergies to the trees around my neighborhood. I say that Jerry Springer is um, the reason that reality TV shows exist today. Especially shows like the Bad Girls Club. Uh, I believe TMZ. Because, you know, that was started by a lawyer as well. Where TMZ didn't just take regular citizens and air their trash. They went after the celebrities, you know, and tried to air their trash and, and try to catch them on camera. Um... I think that was a, a spinoff or a spinoff idea or concept based off of Jerry Springer's show. What else? Even though this was like not really popular, popular like that, world star hip hop. World star hip hop. Shows like Cheaters, Maury, all those shows, they 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 were they were birthed by Jerry Springer, man. They were birthed by Jerry Springer. Um He is another one of them people that if he did some bad shit in his past, I don't want to hear about it. I don't want to hear about it because I just thought that he was just a um, a fun man to watch. He was engaging. He was very outspoken politically as well. You know, he was a Democrat. Um, so he had a lot to say about the previous administration and he spoke his mind on it. He died initially they said they was an unknown illness um and then they said that he had just recently been diagnosed with pancreatic cancer according to the final reports they are saying pancreatic cancer is why he died but i'm going to say it's due to complications of dealing with his pancreatic cancer because i don't believe it was the cancer itself it was other medical issues that had developed due to the pancreatic cancer, which caused him to die. He died at age 79 in his home in Chicago. They say he went peacefully. Um, rest in peace, Jerry Springer. And like like I said, when I got to work, I was like, I saw all the news. I was like, what? Not Jerry. It was right after I posted the PNTV. Um, just a couple nights ago, they had the White House Correspondent Dinner child i always watch the comedians when the white house correspondents dinner the white Co house correspondents dinner usually is a 
pays homage or give shout out to journalists. Um, and they always have a comedian come on there and kind of roast, you know, the journalists, the networks, the, the president, the vice president. Um, over the past few years, man, these comedians have been getting it in. Now, Roy Wood Jr., if I'm not mistaken, is one of the, uh, I was going to say the first black one. No, that was Trevor Noah. Trevor Noah being South African, though, it's not, not necessarily of the United States to have the same history that Roy Wood Jr. could speak on as far as like his parents, his mother being a civil rights activist, his father being a civil rights activist and journalist for the black press. You know, he doesn't have that type of background or footing in the United States as Roy Wood Jr. I'm speaking of Trevor Noah in this particular point. Um, so he, I can't say he's the first black one. Anywho, and Trevor may not have been the first black one either, but I didn't used to always watch the, the White House correspondent, so correct me if I'm wrong. Um, however, the jokes that Roy Wood Jr. told was so hitting. They was like, you know, a lot of times you, you heard the, the comedians use a lot of metaphors when speaking in an arena such as this because they don't want to offend people. Roy did his 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 speech the same way he do his comedy. He was straight to the point. He did not sugarcoat shit. Even when he got booed, he was like, don't boo me, pass legislation. <laughs> shit like that. But for me, for me, what got me the most about the White House correspondence, like I said, Roy was good. Whoever wrote Joe Biden shit, baby, Joe Biden told him a new asshole. He told him a new asshole. Oh, he has some of the most funniest jokes of the night. By the time Joe Biden got through, I don't even know why Roy was nervous. He was like, shit, he did that. Let me go ahead and do it too. Joe Biden talked about Margaret Taylor Greene, talked about Fox Network, talked about Tucker Carlson. He talked, oh, he talked about it. Oh, baby, he got in they ass. He get, whoever wrote his jokes. And Joe Biden delivered it beautifully. <laughs> I usually don't cape for Joe Biden. I just I just be quiet about him. Except for when my student loan shit came through. I usually be quiet about him. Because he wasn't one of my first choices when I you know, went to go vote. When he was running up against Obama. I didn't like Joe. He wouldn't have been my second choice, but Joe has has done shit, as Roy Wood Jr. say, you know, Joe Biden, he, he falls asleep, just randomly and shit, you know what I'm saying? But when he wake the fuck up, he gets shit done. I hey, I can't, I can't even disagree with that. I can't even disagree with that. He gets shit done. So, oh, I think one of my favorite jokes that Joe Biden said was like, you know, he want everybody in here to have fun tonight. But if you feel a little out of sorts, you're going to get a little buck wilds, speaking out of pocket, things like that. I'm paraphrasing. He said, either you drunk or you Marjorie Taylor Greene. I was like, baby, truth. Nothing but the truth. <laughs> oh, he talked about the Fox uh, Dominion voting. Roy Wood talked about the Dominion voting and how they being owned. Roy Wood went in on Clarence Thomas and Harlan Crow by how he's a paid uh, Supreme Court Justice. I put the link for Roy Wood Jr. up on the community tab if you want to see that segment. It's about 20 minutes long. I'm going to share the link for Joe Biden too. It's about 20 minutes long. Either. The whole correspondence dinner that I saw, the longest video I saw was like an hour and a half. So I'm, I'm probably going to go back and watch the whole thing. And I thought it was a good night. A good night. I, I, I laughed my ass off because they spoke so much truth. They put so much truth into their comedy. It was amazing. It was amazing. Speaking of comedian, Jamie Foxx. We really don't have an update on him. It's been three weeks now that he's been hospitalized in Atlanta, Georgia, due to his medical um, complication. Now, early on, there was rumors out that he had had a stroke. And I told you those were different reports that I had saw. Um, I saw another report recently 
that said he had the type of stroke that caused paralysis on the left side of his body. I was listening to the radio yesterday, um, 94.5 here in Orlando, and one of the DJs says he has a very reputable source that told him that Jamie Foxx had a brain bleed uh, or aneurysm. If that aneurysm bursts, you could stroke. Um, and so he reported this yesterday, and he said his sources, he has very good source that says that that information is accurate. Um, sometime last night, there was a post put up on Instagram stating that it was like a, a gratitude post saying thank you for your prayers I appreciate the support and then had a picture of a the praying hands a heart and a fox symbol I do not believe that was Jamie Fox everybody is thinking if you look at the comments it's like 50,000 comments everybody is thinking that that was Jamie Fox making that post I do not believe that was Jamie Foxx's um very rare when Jamie Foxx makes a post does he actually put the Fox symbol sometimes he does but not often and it was only posted on one IG page Jamie Foxx has three IG pages two of them are business related his Twitter page he stayed on a lot nothing on there his daughter still hasn't made another statement nobody from his camp is actually speaking out I just don't believe that was Jamie Foxx. And you see a lot of these news articles going around and you see a picture of Jamie Foxx laying in the bed all beat up and bruised. Did anybody stop to ask themselves why the fuck would he be bruised up like that? That's because the picture ain't him current day. That's from a fucking movie he did back in 2012. I hate when this is the news media that I hate is when they falsify information such as this. Or they add shit that ain't factual to the storyline or add images that ain't you know that they don't match the, or they ain't factual to the storyline to try to make it seem like they got the scoop on everybody else or somebody was able to sneak in a picture of him in the hospital those pictures are from a fucking movie y'all that is not jamie fox today okay um where was i going I was talking to y'all about um, since we were talking about the White House court correspondents and let's talk about the former Commander Zero or somebody on an IG put Commander IQ45 I like that <laughs> President IQ45 so um, I was telling y'all about the litigations that Dumb Donald has in court and as you are aware or maybe you didn't know there's a, a, another case in Georgia dealing with um, Dumb Donald as far as um, shit I don't want to misstate my words on this because you know this Georgia has a case against him and I want to say it. the case looking good put it this way Tabitha speaks politics go over to her channel and get the complete details about the Georgia case that is lining up against Dumb Donald. It seems like they will have better chance at getting a possible conviction than Manhattan did. Okay. I have been tasking myself to follow his rape allegation charges. Again, um, <clears throat> E. Jean Carroll filed charges against him civil charges though because the, the rape is over 30 years old but New York just created a law that allows victims of sexual assault and abuse to um, file civil charges regardless if the statute of limitations has ran out on the criminal side. Civil charges are normally they will compensate you in some kind of way with a fine or you get some type of monetary thing out of it right? One of the things about E. Jean Carroll, she took the stand the other day, that lady ain't changed. When she first brought it up, um, her her testimony ain't changed at all. I remember reading somewhere that Dumb Donald said that he wasn't going to appear in court because he didn't want to um, burden the taxpayers of New York with his legal the, the, the fees that it costs to charge him legally, right? So, um, 
when court happened and he actually didn't decide to show up, I wasn't sure why the journalists were acting all shocked that he decided not to come to court. He said he wasn't coming. He said he wasn't coming to court before the case even started. So I'm like, why is everybody acting shocked that he said he wasn't going to come to court? I mean, I heard him say it. Why y'all didn't hear him say it? I don't know why he wouldn't show up. <clears throat> One of the things, though, that is an issue is that he has been silenced by the judge. The judge said that nobody should be speaking on this case. They shouldn't be tweeting about it, you know, because they didn't want the, the court of public opinion to be swaying the juries and things of that nature. So I forgot what they called it when they when they silenced the, the jury and they silenced the, everybody who's part of the case. Well, of, of course, dumb Donald can't keep his Twitter, Twitter fingers together. He always has to go on and bash uh, the people who are accusing him via Twitter. You know, his big but his buddy Elon let him do that without any type of uh, shit happening negative against him because it's free speech when it comes to dumb Donald, but not free speech when it comes to regular ass folks like us. Anywho. Um, so the judge has given him a warning to stop making those tweets. The judge has given him, I don't know how many fucking warnings. How many warnings you gonna give him, lady, before you hold him in contempt of court? That's what my issue is. Why are you still giving him fucking warnings? How many times he gotta be warned? He was warned the first time when the whole fucking court was warned, okay? And you still ain't like, throw his ass in jail in contempt of court. Fuck, I got held in contempt of court and thrown in jail because I said the word pissed in court and the judge didn't like it. You know what I'm saying? So throw his monkey ass in court in jail. Shit. Let him do some time. Sit his ass up to Rikers. Let him ass sit up in that motherfucker and stew for a minute. And don't give him no fucking secret, secret security. No, whatever the people call. Don't give him that shit either. So yesterday, another um, person came out and, uh, and testified. What's her name? What's her name? Jessica Lee. Jessica Lee was the one who said that... Um, Dumb Donald attacked her on the plane, uh, groped her in the coochie and tried to put his hand up her dress, all that kind of stuff. The one that physically assaulted her on the actual airplane. Her story has not changed either. These ladies are just two of 26 accusers. How many times this motherfucker got to be accused for y'all to actually do something? How many times? I still don't, well, I was going to say, I still don't understand how he couldn't do the criminal charges. Cause they got Cosby on criminal charges. He doing fucking time. But I guess she was still within her statue. I didn't really look deeply into the Cosby case. So, because E. Jean Carroll is out of the statute of limitations, that's why she had to do civil cases. But these other women, I still say filed criminal charges. They coming in to testify to help E. Jean Carroll with her case. But y'all are still within the statute of limitations. I think a lot of these women are women that supposedly have been paid off to keep quiet. You know, they settled out of court. I think. I don't know. That's my quotes. Don't quote me on it. <laughs> but I, I believe that's what the story is. But there's over there's 26 women accusing this man of rape and or sexual assault. He's so far admitted that he has grabbed women in pussy because he could do so. Um. So, like, in, in regards to Jessica's case, she was the, you know, the one who had been grabbed in such a manner, he basically admitted that he did it to her. I don't understand why it's so hard to convict this bitch. I, I just don't understand. Make me understand. I, I, I don't understand at all. Okay. Um. So, yeah. I'm still following that case closely. Hopefully they get that motherfucker. It's Georgia or E. Jean Curl, one of y'all need to take that bitch down. One of y'all need to take that bitch down. Speaking of being taken down, the Writers Guild Association. Since the first time in 15 years, actually since 2007, the Writers Guild Association is now on strike. They are striking against unfair wages. They are striking against, um, I don't even know how to term this. Basically, they believe that companies like Warner Brothers, Netflix, Paramount, um, NBC, Universal, uh, Amazon, that they are fucking up the industry with the streaming services because they're throwing so much money into streaming services that they are not paying 
the writers living wages. <laughs> the, the writers are getting shafted. So after about six weeks of negotiations, they said, fuck it, we tired of this. We striking. They don't know how long this strike is going to be, but there are several shows that have been shut down due to the writer strike and support. So, shows like a lot of more the talk shows, the nighttime talk shows. So we got Jimmy Kimmel Live, The Late Show, The Tonight Show, Late Night, um, Real Time, Last Week Tonight, The Daily Show, uh, Saturday Night Live, The Talk. All of those talk shows are now officially on hiatus in support of the writer strike. Jimmy um, Fallon and Seth. Who was it? Oh, goodness. Did I write him down too? Jimmy Fallon and Seth Meyer. They said that they're going to pay their other staff out of their own pockets for the next three weeks to make sure that they don't go without income. I'm not sure if this is including the writers or just the staff that's being affected because of the writer's strike. I didn't get clarity on that. But yeah, so you will still see their shows on repeat, but live tapings, no, you ain't gonna get none of that. They are in support of the writer's strike. Then there's shows like um, Abbott Elementary, Big Mouth, Cobra Kai, uh, Good Ones, and even Raising Canaan, the show that we watch on this channel, they have all closed their writer's rooms. All closed their writer's rooms. Um, now, Raising Canaan, they have been in production since last year, okay? So, but, you know, they do tweak a lot of stuff while they are producing, and the writers help them tweak it. So, all of that has been put on pause. All of that has been put on pause. The House of Dragons Season 2 um, on HBO, Rap Shit on HBO, um, Issa Rae Show, both of those two shows have, have completed back in April, so those will still air as normal. Um, speaking of Raising Canaan and Power, y'all, if you didn't know, y'all, I love me some Wendell freaking Pierce. Wendell freaking Pierce is supposed to be on the cast of season three. When I saw that news the other day, I screamed so loud with excitement and joy. I love me some Wendell Pierce. Okay. He was Michael and went to his hell. <laughs> the one that couldn't satisfy uh, Whitney. <laughs> yes. I love him. He was bunk on, on the wire. I forgot his name on Jack Ryan, but I loved him on that show as well. Like I told y'all, I'm still currently watching. Um, damn it. It's not the friends that I'm watching. I can't remember. Oh, Suits. He's on Suits. I was currently watching Suits. Love him on there. Um, what else he on, y'all? What else he on? Well, I got my stuff written down. I'm at a red light. The Wire, Way to Tell, Jack Ryan, Suits. Uh, Treme, he was on that as well. I never watched that. I didn't even know what the heck that is. And, you know, he was one of the people who owned up one of the the black grocery store chain down in New Orleans called Sterling Farms. Um, sadly, after a year of him opening up that store, they did close. But basically, he was trying to make sure that in low-income neighborhoods, especially, you know, where he lives in New Orleans and other places in Louisiana, had accessibility to healthy foods, you know, without the high cost or without having to go out into the burbs or the white neighborhoods to go shopping to find it, you know what I'm saying? It's very rare to find a good produce or grocer in the hood. You know what I'm saying? You may have convenience stores that got fruit food that's rotten and expired and shit, but it's like a, a big national chain. Yeah, I'm, I'm sad that his grocery store had closed. Um, but to see him on Raising Canaan, I don't know what role he's going to play. I, I did not want to read what role he was going to play. There's a young lady also that's also joining the cast. Her face looks so familiar, y'all. I cannot find her name. I cannot find her name. I don't know what they're going to play. If they're going to play the legal team or if they're going to play, he going to play Rock's daddy or something. But Rock's mama was supposed to be the one that's supposed to be gutter. I don't know. 
I don't know. I'm just happy that he finna be on this doggone show. I still have to finish watching down season two. I know this. I gotta pay for my star subscription again. I plan on doing it this weekend. It wasn't pressing on my mind over this past week. It just wasn't. So I'm gonna finish out season two if I have to give y'all one summary before season three start. But like right now, Raising Canaan is on hold or on hiatus in support of the writer's strike. Speaking of 50 Cent, because you know he the one that does power in Raising Canaan. 50 Cent is also have another animated TV show that's going to be on Amazon Freebie. It's another stream. Amazon is already a streaming service. Now they got Amazon Freebie that's going to stream some other shit. It's an animated TV show about a black superhero named Lady Danger. She is sparked from the comic book um, Dark Room. Is it Dark Room? I think it is. I think it is. Anywho, Nicki Minaj is actually, I think, going to be the voice of Lady Danger. And she's actually co-producing the show with 50 Cent. Now, I don't know nothing about Nicki Minaj's production ability. I don't think I know that she could, she could do a British accent very well. <laughs> I don't know as far as her acting ability, how far that goes. Oh, she was in Friday. I mean, I didn't think she did all that, though. I thought she was pretty basic in Friday. It wasn't nothing. Okay, anywho. But she's going to be the voice of Lady Danger and producing it along with 50 Cent and his team. Um, I believe it, it must have already made it through the writer's room because I didn't see them saying they were putting that show on hiatus. Um, so, yeah, shout out to Nicki Minaj. I personally think it's going to be a successful show. Despite all the the negative things that we can say about uh, 50 Cent, that boy knows how to produce a damn good TV show and or movie. There has not been one TV show and or movie that he has put out that I disliked. Not one. I mean, they keep you captured and grabbed up. You know what I'm saying? Including the ones that he acts in. 50 Cent is, is, is he on the ball when it comes to putting out TV that the masses want to see. So shout out to them. Shout out to them. Um, let's see. Let's see. Damn it. I get through the whole thing already. I got through the whole thing. Oh. What's that show? Sex in the City. And just like that, it is coming back with the season two. The trailer just dropped the other day. I will post the trailer up on the community board a little later this afternoon so y'all can see it um the way that they ended season one left it open for them to come back and do a season two but at the same time if they didn't get season two done it, it did close that chapter uh, so i'm kind of kind of excited i don't know i like the show i did like it um and Dolinda Tracy TV was reviewing it, and I would watch her reviews. So, yeah, I will be watching it. I don't think that I will be reviewing it, though, but I will be watching it. Let's see. Um, as I ended last week's PNTV, I was trying to tell you they rebooting, or they doing a, a TV series version of White Men Can't Jump. Y'all know the one that had Woody Harrelson and Wesley Snipes, the movie. Okay. I am sick of them rebooting old shit. I'm sick of them turning old shit into TV, new TV shows. I really am. So when I say when I say this for the uh, the writers guild, find some new fucking material, shit, for real. Um, but Jack Harlow, the rapper, Jack Harlow, I got like one or two songs that I actually like. Um, he and Sinqua, what is Sinqua's last name? The one who played Don uh, Cornelius in Soul Train TV show. He also played Sean, 50 Cent's son, or Kanan's son, on Power. Yeah, he's going to be filling the role of Wesley Snipes. Jack Carlos going to be filling the role of Woody Harrelson. And White Men Can't Jump is going to be on Hulu. I'm not excited about it. Um. Oh, also last week after I closed out the PNTV um, actually, I didn't close it out without knowing this. Rapper from the Fugees, Proz, was arrested 
on um, because he had been in cahoots with some Malaysian millionaire or billionaire that was basically paying him off to get him in good with big wigs here in our political sector here in the United States. I was like, I don't know what the fuck is Malaysia got to do with the United States business or what type of standing does Malaysia have if they could put them in any type of arena with the United States business. But everybody seemed to be wanting to take over the United States and their business. It's crazy. But anyway, yeah, he was convicted child. He got a um he had took millions and millions of dollars from this man to try to just get him in rooms or get him linked up and rubbing elbows with some big politicians. I get politicians that can make change or affect change or give him information that he can share or whatever. I don't know how Prize got to be that person that this dude picked. But I remember when um Dennis Rodman was going over there speaking to the dude was it in, in was that in China or was that Korea? About United States Affairs as well. I remember that and I was like, how the fuck did Dennis Rodman get to be that person? Anywho, child, if they can get Pross and lock Pross up, then they should be able to get fucking Judge Clarence Thomas. They need to get his ass. Because that's a, he, he basically did the same thing with Harley Crow. Harley Crow paying his fucking damn judge, did all this different money, buying his mama houses, taking him on trips. Like he his little side piece. You know what I'm saying? They should be able to get Clarence Thomas monkey ass. But y'all know because the, the Supreme Court justice, the only way to get them motherfuckers out there is to impeach him. And to impeach him does not necessarily mean this bitch is going to go to jail. He think he untouchable. The Supreme Court justice all think that they are untouchable. But if you get prize, because based off of what I'm hearing in the reports and what went on, he doing the same thing that Clarence Thomas was doing. Or is doing. So get his ass too. Get Clarence Thomas too. That's my opinion. Okay. Um, I feel like I'm missing something. Oh, I got notes on the back of this too. What is this? Oh, oh just on Twitter news, y'all. Because y'all know I love to live on Twitter. <sighs> Katie Roast a Real Housewives of Potomac. Yeah, you know, she came out and she spoke on the fact that the person that she did sleep with on the show wasn't Ashley. It was Sharice Jordan and how she was hurt by that situation and she lied for Sharice in her court case so she could make sure she still got her settlement for her husband. Katie had been blasted all that. Of course, when P Katie speak, everybody like, go back to rehab. You hide. You don't know what the fuck you talk about this, then and third. They all blast Katie in that manner um, when she speaks. I still think Katie's speaking the truth. Katie is still talking about a child. She is still on Sharice Jordan's neck. But they had sex in the garage. Then Sharice went and told some, some bloggers about it. And people are like, why is Katie ever out Sharice? Well, apparently Sharice already told people about it. It was damn self. You know what I'm saying? Katie is still all over. She, well, you know, she did want to try to get her spot back on the Real Housewives, but she didn't get it. Because Katie is a loose cannon. And Katie does need a lot of therapy. Um, but I believe her in this particular instance. I believe Katie. But there's another person that is on the Twitters right now with his fingers just going. Isaiah motherfucking Washington. Now, Isaiah announced this about a month or so ago that he was retiring from acting altogether. And he was putting hanging up his shoes. But for some reason, Isaiah Washington came out on Twitter last night. He specifically said that he chose woke up and chose violence that day to announce that while he worked on the set of Grey's Anatomy, there was a lot of alcohol, a lot of rampant drug use between the cast and the producers. There was even swingers parties being set up. He had had some, uh, um, some illicit solicitations happen to him when he was invited to secret sex hot, part to, hot, hot tub parties. And he feared that in the three years that he was on the show, that he would have lost his contract and his wife if he had participated in that such thing. Or he'd have been um, he'd have been accused of something as if he was the one that was aggressive. If he had got to that woman's hot tub, he said, but I'm not going to speak on that today. And I was like, who is that woman? Who is that woman? Who is he implying? If he thinking that his contract is in jeopardy, it's Shonda Rhimes. Ellen Pompeo, because they had heavy hands in the production of Grey's Anatomy, child. I'm curious, Isaiah, speak on it. We want him to drop names. 
I want him to drop some names, baby. Now, y'all know Grey's Anatomy was one of my favorite TV shows. In season seven of Grey's Anatomy is when they had that first writer strike. And that was one of the worst written seasons of the entire fucking show. They lost a lot of viewers with that season, baby. But anywho, yes, Grey's Anatomy is no longer going to be on the air. This is the last year. We are not coming back no more. That's it for me, y'all. I'm at work, and that's it for me. So thank y'all for watching. Thank y'all for being here. This has been PNTV. Peace.